welcome to the tail end of Hurricane Paulette. Luckily in Bermuda, the houses are built really strong, concrete, brick and mortar. But let's jump into this episode. Look at this, this is insane. I didn't even know this was here. There's normally under sand, but Hurricane Paula has clearly ripped all the sand off the beach and exposed this platform. I don't even know the last time this has been exposed. I didn't even know this platform, even the stairway, all this here and the stairway up here, I didn't even know any of this existed. That is actually scary to think how much sand movement has actually come off off this beach from Hurricane Paulette. I mean, it must have been sucking the, so much sand off, but look at it. Didn't even know this was here, that is mental. I really wonder what it's gonna be like when we jump down into the water and see what damage the hurricane did to the reef. Let's go in and let's go see what it looks like. So it's great to get finally back out into the water with Rafa after Hurricane Paulette. When we dropped down onto the reef, me and Rafa noticed loads of big limestone rocks that has fallen off the reef or been part of the reef that's come off. And we can see like here, there's a huge brain coral that's grown on this limestone head that's fallen off. Now the swells and surge must have been so severe to knock these size of boulders off. Other things that we came across was the sand movement has been so huge that there was piles of old conch shells that were buried under the sand. They must have been there for 10, 20 years. As you can see Rafa is looking at them all, there's so many, there's no conchs in them. These would have been piled under the sand for a long, long time. It was like a graveyard from them from years ago, so it just shows you the sheer sand movement that you see coming off. But they were in stunning conditions and well preserved with the sand. So as we looked, moved away from the conks and moved back across the reef, we came across more and more coral that has come off the reef and fallen into the sand. You know, the depth we're at now is maybe around about eight meters. So you can imagine the swell and surge will have a big impact on the shallower water because the waves are probably breaking at this point. So we're coming through a sand passage here, working our way towards the deeper reef and to the breakers from the shoreline. Now as you can see Rafa is hugging his zookeeper, when we started going out the zookeeper actually broke so he's holding on for, it for the rest of the dive. As you can see here we have boiler breakers sitting there looking in great condition, really healthy and when we're moving to the deeper water you can see we're coming through a passage to drop down to around about 15-16 metres and the brain coral, the sea fans, all of that is looking really healthy and I guess being at a greater depth and behind the breakers, there's been very little impact on the reef here. Now Rafa, I don't know what he was doing here, he started signaling to me at first a nudibranch, but he was signaling a lionfish. Now lionfish are invasive to Bermuda, so when we do see them, we remove them straight away off the reef. They are an invasive species, they actually decimate the local um, marine life and they target more the juveniles and crustaceans so it actually impacts like, the pirate fish populations and other marine populations uh, that actually help protect and preserve the reef you know because it's a complete, complete ecosystem so when we see them we remove them from the reef so once we got them we actually moved the lionfish into the zookeeper which Rafa is carrying you know Again, you have to be very careful, they're venomous, not poisonous, so the spines are what can inject the venom into you. So we moved him into the zookeeper and we continued our dive along, exploring, seeing if we could find any more lionfish to remove, but more to see how the reef was looking. When we look along here, we have a Spanish hogfish that is just coming up. One of the bigger ones I've seen, but he's just cruising along the reef, quite happy and pleasant. And again, we're starting to now work our way back towards shore. Pretty much very easy to get back at John Smith's Bay. We're taking a northwesterly direction back into shore, and you can see the coral is looking really healthy, in good condition. Now we come across this beautiful arch under one of the breakers, 
there was a bit of swell going on the day so there was real surge pushing in and out under this arch under the breaker so we started going in and it starts sucking us in and you know you start getting the surge then flips and starts pushing you back out so there was a moment I'm like oh do I turn around but I knew the moment the surge rotated again I was going to get fired straight back out of the arch but it was great, great fun it was like a roller coaster ride through there we were going to see Rafa coming through in the moment with the zookeeper broken zookeeper looking trying to grab onto a bit of rock to keep himself going back through just he, he's just having a bit of a uh, fun there but the zookeeper was causing a bit of problems because it's blocking during the dive but enough from me let's just continue exploring the dive site together <laughs> So me and Rafa have just got out from an 18 minute dive at John Smith's Bay. We were surveying the reef, seeing what damage the reef's been done from Hurricane Paulette that hit on the weekend. I mean the damage wasn't too bad as we thought. There was some big brain coral heads, big coral heads that have been knocked off and are sitting in the sand as you've seen in footage. And we also, they actually exposed loads of really interesting things. There was a big pile of conks just sitting in the sand. They must have been buried for 10, maybe even 20 years. I'm not actually too sure. That was pretty cool, to be honest. Didn't expect to see them. Other things that we've noticed is that a lot of furniture has clearly got blown into the, uh, people's furniture got blown into the sea as well. So we saw a lot of tables, a lot of chairs, a lot of tires have been exposed. There's a lot of tree branches and actual trees that have been blown into the sea. So of course we'll go in and try and remove the chairs at some point as well but we now have another hurricane that's about to hit us later this week so we need to watch out for that one um, rafa was going to tell us chat to us about the dive as well but unfortunately he's had a jump to work so we'll catch him in another video but one thing i'd say is the reef has really withstood the hurricane pretty much well as you see in the footage the reef's looking stunning it's in good condition still it's very resilient the reef in bermuda and one thing we're very lucky with in Bermuda is we have a breaker line, a natural breaker line, and that breaker line helps break the waves coming in and reduce the storm surge when hurricanes hit us. With that natural barrier almost, it stops the waves and the surge being so forceful and impacting the island in hurricanes like you have in the Bahamas and Florida because they don't have this natural break line around the island. It's something we have, we're very lucky in Bermuda and it's something we need to make sure we protect because it's invaluable to protecting the island. But I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. It's looking a stunning, beautiful day. We have another hurricane, as I said, Cat 4, Teddy. It's all out there at the moment. It's about two days out, so you can see it looks calm just now. But in two days' time, it's going to be wild again. It's expected to hit us as a Cat 3, which will be a major hurricane. It's going to slow down its power from its current stage to Cat 4, because Paulette has kindly cooled the water and cooled the air for us slightly which will help reduce the power of the hurricane, hopefully. But it's coming. It looks peaceful, but it's out there. It's coming. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next one.